everybody. It's 3 p.m. and it's time for dinner with Nanny Bubby. How are you today? I'm Nanny Bubby. This is my home kitchen and welcome to today's show. It's Wednesday, 2-2-22. I just love that. So I've been very busy all morning and all afternoon right up into this very second was shooting some Instagram reels. We shot, I think we did five or six. I can't remember. Hey, Frank, how are you? We had a great time working with a wonderfully talented videographer. And I'm really excited to start presenting these reels to you. They'll be all be on Instagram. Um, but we were shooting right up until just like seconds ago. And so here I am. And so what I want to do is just do a quick uh methodology on how to brown chicken. So I'm going to heat this up. Biggie's already barking. Hello, Biggie. Biggie's already talking. Hey, Teresa, how are you? So Teresa's here, Frank's here, and Biggie's here. It's like old home week here on Nanny Bubby. So the first thing we're going to do to start browning chicken is you want to make sure that it is all very, very dry, right? Make sure your chicken is very dry. Let's salt the back side. There we go. Remember, raise your spoon up very high. And let's put some fresh ground pepper. Hey, Judy Woods, nice to see you. So happy we're here. Everybody's finding us. Everybody's tuning in. I was just mentioning um, at the beginning and the top of the show that we were shooting Instagram reels here from very early this morning. Hey, Sue Rainish. Hey, Berta Phillips. Um, and uh, we finished seconds ago before we signed on. Okay, so I'm flipping these back over. Give me a thumbs up if you can see this chicken because I'm having trouble seeing it. And I want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. And then make sure above all else that the skin, okay, good that the skin is very, very nice and dry, very nice and dry because you want it to become, hey, Lester, Chip, Madsen, how are you? So what I, we're going for is what I'm gonna show you is look at how nice and golden brown the skins on these chickens are. And I'm gonna show you an amazing hack for that. So if you're ready, let's salt the backside of this. Right now, the butter and olive oil in this pan are heating up some of the drippings from the four, uh, these are chicken thighs, bone in, that I was doing, okay. A little more ground pepper. Hey, Susan Mendorf, oh my goodness, everybody's here today, so nice and early, so happy to see all of you. Okay, so there you go. This is your nice dried, because the drier the skin, if the skin is wet with a lot of uh, juices, it is going to steam in your pan rather than brown, and you really want it brown and crispy. So if you're ready, let's move this over. Let's see it start heating up. There we go. I can hear it. It'll start sizzling in just a second. Nice and hot. Okay, and if you're ready, here's the hack. You're going to take this skin down. There we go. You hear it sizzling? You hear that? Let me pull this. Can you see it okay? All right. Two. Three. Four. And five. Okay? Now, all skin down. But the problem is, chicken is oval. The sides don't necessarily hit the bottom of the pan. And how are you going to get that nice, even sear and browning in, on the skin that looks beautiful just like that? Look at how beautiful that is, right? Here's the hack. Nice, heavy pot. Make sure the bottom is nice and clean, and boom, that's it. Let it sit there six to eight minutes, and when, when that is over, when six to eight minutes is over, you're going to have nice, beautifully brown chicken just like this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to braise 
these chicken thighs. And I'm gonna braise them simply. Can you hear that sizzling? I'm gonna braise it simply with taking that vegetable stock that I used just about a quarter of a pan yesterday. I'm gonna go ahead and put them right on this. So let me put this in a view where you can see it. And I'm gonna add some mushrooms to it and cover it. And when Tom gets home tonight from his second fundraiser from the week, I will be able to just pop it in the oven and braise the rest of that chicken and we'll be in good shape. So let me grab the chicken stock. And the mushrooms. And actually it's vegetable stock, I misspoke. So here we go. Shaking this up. Just going to pour in enough so that it comes halfway up. There we go. And Judy says that is like chicken under the brick. That is exactly what it is, right? That is, but I didn't have a brick today. <laughs> so this is what I use. I never understood chicken under a brick, but honestly, I do now because it just makes so much sense, right? So there we go. You can see the braising. I'll let that continue to cook. I'm just going to take the mushrooms, beautiful, beautiful sliced baby bellas right here that I love to eat. Mm. They're so meaty and so good. I just absolutely love these baby Bellas from Whole Foods. These are great. Can you hear that sizzling? I'll get down a little closer so the microphone gets it. And that's really basically the whole show today. And it is the whole show today because I have just shot seven segments, cooking segments for Instagram. And I thought I would be done around one o'clock so that I'd be able to go run to the grocery and get home and, and get something prepped for all of you today. But this is all I've got. And it was part of the cooking segment from earlier today on Instagram. But, you know, life happens, and I know all of you guys understand that. And um, so that's how, how we roll around here. We just keep rolling right into the next show. So let's see how this is actually... Um, doing. Let's see how it's browning. All right. So not much yet, right? Definitely not looking. And you know, the key to doing this is to not move these, really. Like you shouldn't be peeking. You should set your timer and let it roll. But you're here and I just wanted to see how things were rolling and what was going on. So let's talk. Why don't you ask me some questions, and I'll communicate with you while we're waiting for this to brown, just like this is. So have at it. What would you like to know? What can I help you with? Tell me what's happening in your life. Let's just chat away for the next four minutes or so while we're waiting for this to, um, to brown. What have you got for me? So tomorrow I have Channel 8, and I won't be here tomorrow, and I'm making that fabulous dish that just a week ago Chef Katie Chin taught us. Um, it was such a great recipe. So Chip says, where's your favorite realtor? Who's my favorite realtor? That's what he says. Not where, but who. You're my favorite realtor. Okay. What are you going to be uh, on the reels? Or, or what? A, so we did um, six different cooking segments. They're called Nanny Bubby Tidbits. Teresa, thank you for asking. And they're just little tiny tidbits, not for most of you, because most of you are a much more experienced cook than we, we do and have and have chatted about a lot more advanced type of cooking. And this is a very long form show for that. But on Instagram and on TikTok, where there are young people who maybe want to learn to cook, um, but... In, you know, they're not teaching home ec like they did in our generation. And those young people want to learn how to cook. Their most basic instinct is to learn how to feed themselves and ultimately their children. And a lot of these young people had working mothers um, or had career mothers. Uh, and 
she was taught to burn her bra and her apron. So a home cooked meal was not necessarily prevalent in their life. And so now as they are getting older, they crave what they never had, which is a home cooked meal, right? They don't want Uber. They don't want to be in the drive through, but if they don't know the difference between a capital T for tablespoon and a little T for teaspoon, and they're trying to cook from a cookbook, and it says two big T salt, or excuse me, two little T salt, which is two teaspoons, they may think that means a tablespoon and put in two tablespoons of salt, and then poof, if the meal is too salty, and they say, I don't know how to cook. Anything I make never turns out right, even when I'm following the recipe. But the key is they're not following the recipe. So based on that, we are just doing these little tidbits. Like today I did, um, how many dishcloths do you use when you cook? I use three. One for the counter, right here. One for my hands and another, which just dropped on my toes. A dishcloth. So when I'm washing and drying dishes because I'm cooking and cooking for a party and there's lots of dishes and things to do, I always use one dishcloth just for the dishes. Or if I rinse a knife and I've got to dry the knife and keep going. So that's one. The other is just for my hands. And I always, always use the colored one for my hands. And the reason why is that, let's say... I touch raw chicken and I just need to get the moist off my hands. Well, if I can use this dishcloth for my hands, but, or if I've got oil or butter on my hands, but if I also use this to dry the dishes or a knife, I'm getting bacteria all over the chicken, right? Or all over whatever it is I'm making or the dishes. So one for the hands, one for the dishes, and the other one, to constantly wipe down the countertop, right? So that was just one reel that we did today. The other was how to measure butter. So see, this is all wet right here. So I'm using, always use this, the bar dishcloth to uh, wipe it. Okay, so we check this. Berta says, I have a great uh, glass top stove. What skillet would you recommend for use on a glass top? Well, is your glass top, Berta, is it induction? Is it a, an induction um, stove? And, if, and glass top, I think, is induction. And would that be the case? So let me know, and I'll answer your question. Um, La Cousse works on an induction. So you're good there. Let's see how this works. Ugh. There we go. Look at that. Look at how nice. Whoa. There we go. Look how nice and brown that is. Do you see that? Do you see that? There we go. So I am going to take these and just turn them over. So we did how to measure butter by putting your butter into water. So you measure out, as an example, a cup of water based on the line. Look how nice and brown and beautiful that is. Look at that. Okay, let me turn this down. So, and this one. And let's say you want two tablespoons of butter. Two tablespoons equals an ounce. Okay, let me put this into the pan. This one could take another minute. Let's see what we've got here. All right. Let's just take these four with another couple of minutes. Hold on. I'll be right back to that thought. Okay. Here we go. Okay. So Berta says, no, not induction. I like using cast iron, and that is a no-no on glass. Got you. Even the La Crusade, because it's an enamel uh, cast iron. So the La Crusades are enamel. They're enamel both on the inside, if you can see, and with the color on the outside, this is also enamel. 
So even though the inside is cast iron, the outside is enamel. So have you ever checked into La Crusade? Um, that could be the only thing that I would suggest. I love my La Crusades. I use them all the time. And I, I can't not use them because when I'm cooking for you, this cooktop that I have right here is induction. And as a result of that, I've had to buy extra La Crusade pans. Otherwise, I would not be able to cook with you every day because my stove or my range, which is behind me, is gas. So I can use any kind of uh, stainless steel on that, but you can't use stainless steel on induction. So I, out of just needing to be here with you every day, have been using La Crusade. And now, honestly, I wish every pan in my kitchen was a La Crusade. I absolutely love it. So see if that works. I am guessing the enamel doesn't scratch or hurt the glass top for us. So try that. So the other thing that I was telling you, help me what I was talking about. Um, so dishcloths we talked about. Oh, measuring butter. So two tablespoons of butter is one ounce, right? Two tablespoons equal an ounce. So what you do is butter has so much air in the butter that even if you put it into a tablespoon and smash it down and smash it down and smash it down, yes, you'll have a tablespoon, but now how are you going to get it out of that tablespoon without leaving so much behind? So we showed how to properly measure butter by every tablespoon. Two tablespoons is an ounce, so I fill the measuring cup with eight ounces of water, and then I put in enough butter that it went up one ounce to nine ounces. And when it went up one ounce, that meant I had uh, uh, two tablespoons of butter in there. And you would do the same thing with a half a cup of butter. Half a cup would be, let's see, two, four, six, eight tablespoons would be a half a cup. So you would fill a big measuring, like maybe a large four cup measuring cup with um, eight ounces of water and then put it in enough that the water level went up another half cup and then you know you have a half cup of butter in there so we did that we did the dishcloth we did um, the browning of the chicken which this might be browner now let's see how this looks honestly we started early this morning so i'm a little exhausted um, so I don't remember what the others were right at this moment, but anyway, there we go. Brown and beautiful, right guys? I'm going to sprinkle mushrooms on this and it's a simple dinner. It's just brown. I'm going to stick it in the oven, um, at about 425 when Tom calls when he's on his way home. Um, and we will just have beautiful chicken thighs and mushrooms. How's that, guys? How's that? Okay, there we go. Let me move this off to the side so I can give you a better view of everything. Okay, oh, Chip, my favorite realtor isn't just you. My other favorite realtor for sure is Judy Woods, who is here every day, so she really is my very favorite realtor, okay? Just to make sure you know that. Just, hey, Judy, did you hear me say that? He asked me a leading question. Okay. All right. Looks delicious. Thank you so much, Frank. Susan Mendorf says, yummy. Okay. I'm just going to sprinkle these mushrooms around. Um, I'm going to put this in the oven to braise just a little bit. This one looks like it won't be braising as much as the others, but I think it'll be fine. I'll put it in a 375 oven for about 20, 25 minutes. So, so when Tom is driving home from downtown, it'll all be perfect. And that's it. That's tonight's. Yes, and Tanya is right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Judy. You're so gracious and loving. I just love you. Thank you so much. Yes, Tanya and you. And then Chip. Okay, Chip. You have to come every day and be as supportive as everybody else. Yes, for sure. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that's it for me, everybody. Thank you so much for being here every single day. I love it. it you breathe air into my lungs and into my heart. I thank you so much, and I love you so much. So on the count of three, are you ready? One, two, three. Go out and spread love 
like butter. Bye, everybody. Thank you.